Do I hit record? Good afternoon, everyone. I am Joe Prisco, and I am joined by Samaria Withered from our Dillard Track and Field program. So, Samaria, how are you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> um, how'd your online classes and fi uh, finals end up going this year for you? They ended up going pretty good. I usually not the person to learn online or anything because I feel like we're very it it kind of like stops in a sort of way because whenever you're at school you know you can be in class and like really get an on hand thing but during online this year it was actually not that bad like the teachers communicated very well and I got I got good grades and nothing really went wrong like ever so it's it wonderful i know they had to be a little bit of an adjustment for everyone um especially like being in front of the uh, teacher i know that you know there's a lot of people that kind of learn in that manner um and that there's nothing wrong with that so um you know hope, i'm glad that you were able to make the adjustment and hopefully it's only a temporary adjustment as well so <laughs> yeah. um how is your family doing Pretty good. Uh, my mom, she's a teacher, so they're really depending on, they're not really sure if they're going back to school or not. Um, so she is, she's also a doctorate degree. So she has a lot going on, but she's doing really well. Um, she has to do everything on the computer for her kids. She also runs a program at her school. So she has a lot of stuff on her plate, but from the COVID and and moving everything on the computer, it's not too bad for her, you know? She learns pretty well. Awesome. Did you give her some tips on, uh, you know, what, what's best for her? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm, the one, I'm the one that got her hooked on Zoom because at first her, um, her principal or whatever, they programmed it to where they use um, like Google or something. Yeah, but I was like, like oh, you should, yeah, you, I feel like she, I, I told her I was like Zoom's better, Mom. Get on Zoom, <laughs> and she did, and she really liked it. And now her sorority, she's also AKA they use Zoom too. So, yeah. Awesome. awesome. So you know the the uh, student became the teacher. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And she always asks me to help her with her like work citing and everything. But yeah, I try to help her as much as I can because I know like older. Well, they don't really like, I mean, a lot of them, they don't really like learning a lot of new stuff on the computer, I guess. But I try to teach her everything I know. That's awesome. You know? That's awesome. You know, you know that's uh, a wonderful way to contribute. You know, things that you've learned, you know, um, that way yeah. it can help her, you know, in her classes and teaching and everything else like that. So um, how has your summer gone? Um, I know that you might be a little limited in what you can do, but, you know, how, how have you felt as if your summer has gone? I feel like it's okay. Um, the most that I do is I go on the track. I also have a job, so it's not that hard for me, like mentally staying in the house and being like, you know, held on like what I can do or whatever. But I still feel like it's so hard because of everything that's going on. There's not a lot of places open, you know, any, the only place that, that is open out here is a water park and then Six Flags. And Six Flags is like 40, 50 minutes away. So I feel like in the summertime, you should have fun leisures, you know, yes. because it's a break. Even though I did do summer school, just because, you know, I just felt like it was the best, yes. best you know, opportunity for me. But I feel like it really wasn't a break because I work every day you know and then I I love running so I don't really see running as like anything because I'll run even if I'm on break I'll work out <laughs> I'll work I'll work out even if I'm on break no matter what the cost but it was I literally did workouts on my sidewalk like I did suicides and stuff um so a lot of the resources are very limited on what you can do. I don't even go to the uh, weight gyms because I don't trust the cleaning yeah. that they do. So it down 
basement, I use like, you know, like there's like this ab workout and then we have bars and weights in our basement. But a lot of stuff is limited because of the COVID. So I feel like I'm okay because I have a job and, you know, I work every day, but other people, oh, I just feel bad, you know, because it is very limited. Exactly. So you mentioned you have a job. What, what sort of job do you have? I just work at Walmart, you know, doing, I, well, I have like a manager position. I got offered a manager position awesome. because pretty good with money and everything. But since I'm a full-time student and I'm going back to New Orleans, I'm not going to take it. Obviously. <laughs> it's, it shows that you know, they've got trust in you. Um, did you just start working at Walmart this summer or had you had a previous relationship with them? Um, I just started working at Walmart this summer. And then also I do internships with Dillard and then I have an internship with the NASA, um, NASA through Dillard because wow. we're working on like a payload. And then I also had an internship with this other college in Oklahoma, like a conference call where we talk about databases. So I've been really busy, even yeah. though... You know, it sounds like not only that, but you're amazingly good with numbers if you're working for NASA and, you know, databases and everything else like that. <laughs> yeah, well, it wasn't, it wasn't like that hard. I was just kind of like an internship looking and overseeing um, all of like the people that are like top programmers and scientists for different colleges like around the, the US. And I would just like take notes and we would um, do like a Google doc. And then I'd talk about it with my, uh, with Professor Simeon. I don't know if you know her, but she's uh, the chemistry, the head of the chemistry department at Dillard. And then for the, for the payload project through NASA, we have to like build stuff on the computer. So it's not a lot about numbers, but I never would have thought that I would be doing this because I'm a like still a biology major and I love like in the future, I want to be a pediatrician. Okay. So I never thought that I would be really good at it, but I really like it and everything, like what they're talking about. Awesome. Awesome. And, you know, it, it sounds like it's a rewarding one that challenges you intellectually as well, which is really important too. I mean, um, you know, the fact that yeah. you challenge on a, a regular basis is, you know, time management's got to be essential for you as you have, you know, two, two different internships you're working, you're working, uh, you know, at Walmart, you're doing workouts. You know, you know the, your time management skills have to be top notch. I give you all the credit in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a lot. And, and you would think that I would get a break during the summertime, but I made it so I wouldn't because of all of this Corona stuff. Yeah. It's better to keep your mind busy instead of sitting at, sitting at your house and doing nothing. You know? <laughs> awesome. awesome. So I know that um, obviously you're doing things to keep yourself physically. And you know, are you doing things also, you know, to keep yourself, you know, like mentally, like able to relax and whatnot? Because it sounds like you're on the go all the time and, you know, I, I know yeah, like yeah. Time, um, you know, time to unwind is very important. Yeah, well, I have a pool in my backyard, so awesome. I'm lucky in that aspect. I mean, I go and I swim in my pool and relax. And on Sundays, we have like a Sunday dinner where I get to like help cook sometimes if I'm not working. So there's there's like two days in my schedule where I have time to relax. You know. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So um, you mentioned that you do some of the cooking. Um, what's your favorite dish to cook? Or, or what, you know, or, you know what, what's the dish that's been most popular that you've cooked? Um, well, I know that last time, well, last Sunday we didn't have a family dinner because my sister, she had barbecue and I went over there. But the last time we cooked something, I think it was, I helped like chop up some vegetables and everything like that. Granted, I don't get to cook a lot because I have to work on Sundays. So before the time, I'm usually like the preparer. Like I chop up the vegetables and do all the easy stuff. But last time they made like peach cobbler and I helped my mom with that. So yeah, and I really like peach cobbler a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> it's wonderful. So, um, you know, are you able to keep in touch also with your teammates with everything you've got going on? Do you have like a group check, guys? Uh, yeah, group we, whatnot? Yeah. Uh, well, 
two of the teammates I pretty much talk to every day and we FaceTime like a lot. So yeah, it's not that you would think that it would be hard, but if you have people that want to communicate with you and talk to you every day, you know, it's, it's easier. Like my friends that go to Dillard, they don't necessarily like do track or anything, but we have a group chat. We talk every day, you know, it's it's really important that you're keeping in touch with people. I mean, just, you know, as busy as you, you are and have been and whatnot. So that, that's, uh, that's essential. You still there, Samir? <clears throat> we'll pick up right where we left off there. Um, you know, as busy as you've been, have you picked up any like new hobbies, books, TV shows, anything else like that? I mean, I love TV. I don't know about books. I probably need to start reading some. I was actually thinking about that like two days ago, matter of fact. But um, so this new, I really like watching Shameless and they just got out. They just uh, put out season nine. Shameless is not um, a pg-13 it's not like the best <laughs> show that everyone should watch so i'm just putting that out there in case you know someone sees this and be like shameless you know it's not that appropriate but but i love that show and i have been watching it since season one so i was really excited for season nine to come out and then there is actually a new one that came out and it's called the curse and yes. it's the girl who plays on um what is that show she like it's a, it's supposed to be like something for everyone to watch i know that she committed suicide and she made these tapes and oh, like 13, the, 13 reasons why 13 reasons why she played on 13 reasons why and now she's in the curse and okay. the curse i would recommend for a lot of people because okay. that's actually you know pg and you know people can actually watch that without being like <laughs> But the curse is so good. I was so surprised. Like she, I feel like in 13th Reason Why, it didn't like, I'm really a fan of like actors and actresses. Not really like, I don't really know a lot of people's names because names are just not good for me. I cannot yeah. remember. But I know when I see a good actor and an actress, yeah. and I feel like 13th Reason Why didn't like, didn't show like her, her acting skills, but yeah. I feel like in The Curse, she is so much better. Like the development. I'm just like, wow, why, why, why would, why didn't I see this in 13 Reasons Why? And I literally stopped watching it. After season one, I couldn't do it anymore. It was just sad, but I, yeah. but yeah, those are my top two that I'm watching. Okay. Well, you know, anyone watch, watching this, you know, they're, they're getting a couple of, uh, you know, show recommendations for the future. So excellent. So yeah, pretty one, good. One, more for the adult crowd, one's for everyone. So, you know, you, you hit all the markets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously, we're still social distancing. And, you know, hopefully in the, you know, in the future, we won't. Um, so in the future, when you get the opportunity to not social distance anymore, what's the thing you're looking forward to doing the most? Um, I, don't know. I feel like now I have kind of like a paranoia of going out and like whenever we stop social distancing, you know, if if I'm gonna like catch anything. But I think I think the um the most important thing would be eating out to eat because I like eating. Okay. So Mom, I'm on a conference call. Anyways, so so I think I'm really looking forward to eating. Just sitting down, eating at a booth you know, waking up in the morning, going to IHOP, getting pancakes. And then I like dinner. I like pasta. I'm a, I'm a pescatarian, so I don't eat like, okay. you know, um, ham, chicken, or beef or yeah. any of that. Stuff. But I love me some crab legs. So I cannot wait. Okay. For social. I was yeah. going to ask you, you know, with IHOP, what's your pancakes? What, what is your pancake when you go to IHOP? Do you have, do you have one that you like over any of the other ones? I like, uh, the the strawberry cheesecake pancakes. Excellent. Those are so good. <laughs> yeah, definitely those. Excellent. I I myself I like chocolate chip ones, but that's just me. I, I'm 
I'm big into chocolate, so. <laughs> so. Oh. Are you still uh, with us? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought I lost you there, so I wanted to make sure that uh, I still had you. Um, so, you know, when did you first start participating in track and field? Um, and, you know, like at what age and what drew you to the sport? Okay. Um, I started participating in track and field in my freshman year of high school. <laughs> So, and then I don't know what you said for the second question. No, I'm, I'm like, you know, when, when, when did you first start participating? What drew you to track? That, like, you know, like, there's a lot of sports out there. So what drew you to the sport? Oh, okay. Um, so, literally, the story is I moved from Missouri to Louisiana, and then we moved back. But in Louisiana, I did gymnastics and I did track. So, I was running a mile I think we had a mile warm-up or something or no just the mile because I was a freshman I went to Lafayette High in Louisiana mm -hmm. and we had a gym class and I ran the mile in like 639 <laughs> just like you know jogging and it wasn't even the actual like grade of the class I was just focused on getting a good grade because I'm a perfectionist mm -hmm. and I want to get straight A's so I was just focused on that, and he was like, well, anyone who runs in under eight minutes gets an A, no matter what. So I was just running it, and he was like, oh, wow, you're done already? And I was like, yeah. And then he looked at the time, and he was like, oh, shoot, I got I to gotta recommend you to coach. You cannot be in this gym class anymore. And in Louisiana, I don't know. I don't know if it's, it's definitely different from Missouri gym classes, but I know in Louisiana – uh, your gym class is either um, in your schedule, but they can make your track as a class in your schedule and like put it in your schedule. In Missouri, we don't we don't do that, so I wasn't used to that. So he was like, "Well, we have to we have to switch you over because this is just you have to be recommended." So then he recommended me to the coach, and he was like, "You know, I can switch your schedule around. You can be in track, and then." this class period will be for track. So then after, after that, I just started, you know, um, running for their team at Lafayette High. And he actually made me a pole vaulter because he said that, you know, any other thing would be hard, especially since you're a gymnast and I was training for the Olympics. Like yeah. it wasn't just normal gymnastics yeah. class for one day. Um, so, he said this would be the easiest thing for you to do. So I did pole vaulting and it was, I love pole vaulting. Then we moved back to Missouri and I didn't want to do it anymore. And, and I um, wasn't doing gymnastics anymore so I could do more stuff in track. So then after I moved back, then I got into triple, then I got into hurdles then I did the relays and everything just because I had more time. So that's pretty much the story there. It's a great origin story. You mentioned gymnastics. I know, you know, when you're in gymnastics, you start very young for that, um, you know, for that sport. Did you, you know, like start like when you're like, like. Old? I started when I was three years old. So. Really? <laughs> yeah. And um, you, um, do you ever miss, you know, was there an event you, uh, that you focused on as a, as a gymnast? Well, I didn't really, I liked all the events except balance beam. And I didn't like balance beam just because I, I am tall. I'm five, nine. Yeah. So gymnastics was already hard for me in the first place, but I was really good at it. And I wanted to, you know, get to a, a high level before you know I would really think about if I wanted to pr proceed even though my height because height is really a main factor whenever it comes to gymnastics like it's a stopping factor so um I really like the balance beam but since you're tall I mean there's a lot of if you're tall, they can see a lot of errors and you can oh, yeah. get lower scores. And for bars, it's even worse because if you're tall and they can't adjust the bars to your height, you will touch the floor and you'll get deducted off of your points. Um, and also, if you're taller, it's harder to swing and, you know, you have to be really strong. But I think my favorite event was floor, but I was, my best event was vault. Okay. Well, 
it's very educational as well. So you know, we're getting a little everything from you. So I, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Um, how did you first decide to attend Dillon? Wait, I don't know what you said. I'm sorry. No, um, um, how did you first decide to attend Dillard? You know, there's a lot of schools out there. How did you decide to attend Dillard? Oh, okay. So <laughs> this is like this is like the big like I was waiting for this question. So at first, I'm a tran. Well, I was a transfer. I transferred last semester to Dillard University, and I was a sophomore in my second semester. So I transferred during the springtime, which is very abnormal. Yeah. I mean, obviously, most people transfer in the fall, but I did it in the spring. And the reason why is because I went to Central Methodist University. It's like three hours away from where I live because I live in Missouri. So um, I just felt like I didn't really belong where I was going to school. I mean, there's a lot of other things involved, but I really just needed a change. And, you know... Um, uh, the track team at CMU was really, really good, but my thing is I just wanted to, you know, be on my own because I felt like since I was so close at home, I wasn't really, like, getting that. Like, I wasn't yeah. really being on my own, being an adult and, like, growing. Like, I wasn't growing how I wanted to do, not yeah. emotionally, emotional or mental, I was growing physical with my training at SAMU, but I felt like, you know, I didn't like it there in the first place. So why am I spending money on a school that I don't like when I could go to a school I do like? Yeah. So I know I wanted to go to Louisiana because I had lived there previously and my mom went to Southern University. Um, she was an AKA. So my choices were actually Loyola or Dillard or Xavier. I didn't really know much about Xavier. And at Loyola, um, I just felt like a HBCU would be better for me, what would be the best and the most diverse change for me because I had gone to, I live in St. Peter's, Missouri. And if you don't know what that is, there's not diversity here mm -hmm. at all. There's probably like naughty, like I was the only, you know, colored person in my class my whole entire life, my whole life. So um, even in high school. So I really needed like a change in everything. So Dillard was the best, was the best option for me. And I love going to school there. Awesome. Yeah. That and I yeah, have developed so much and am it's and I am so much more happy, you know. So yeah. You, you beat me to my next question because I was gonna ask next, uh, you know, how have you noticed changes in yourself since you arrived on campus? Um, but you've already beaten to that one. So um, we'll get into a couple easier ones for you. Um, you mentioned yeah. uh, you enjoy uh, TV. Um, do you enjoy movies as well? Yeah, I like movies too. Okay. Um, do you have Anything a movie? TV. <laughs> What'd you say? Do you have a favorite movie? Um, I like I like so many. There's so many to choose from. You, can, you know the couple. It, it, this is your show, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like Hitch, um, Men in Black. Oh, oh my gosh! I love Think Like a Man. That is my favorite movie. I would watch that back to back over and over again every day. If I could watch it eight times a day, I would watch it eight times a day. <laughs> yeah, and then I, my favorite anime movie is like Big Hero 6 or yeah. maybe Finding Nemo. I like a Mulan too. Those are my, my, anim, <laughs> like my top three animated, but like regular movies definitely be like Hitch, anything with, Mil, with Will Smith or Tyler Perry, I love Medea movies. <laughs> you know, I could just go on and on. Yeah, <laughs> those those are my favorite. I have to, I have to say that, that you you are great at you know answering the question before I, uh, before I even give it to you. So that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, you are well prepared and you work ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, do you have a favorite musical artist? Um, or or yes, definitely. I like Lauren Hill and Alicia Keys. I'm a, like an old soul, so I don't really like like new, a lot of new people, but I'm a singer myself, and I led worship 
I've led my worship team at the college I previously went to. And so I like, I am, I make my own music too. So I love music. Really? So, do you play yeah. an instrument or do you sing or, you know? I play violin and I played violin since I was um, nine or eight years old. And then I play piano too. I just learned how to play piano um, like a year ago and I, I sing. So, wow. Yeah. Very multi-talented. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm always impressed uh, when I have these interviews, how many of our athletes, they play an instrument and they sing. So, cause you know, not only are you guys stars on the field, but you know, your ability to shine off the field and all, outside the classroom as well. So congratulations to you. It's a very multi-talented person you are. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's mainly because my mom, cause she wants us to get involved in everything. And I was involved in a lot of stuff, like so much stuff. That's why I'm pretty good at um, time management because I was so involved in so many different things in high school. And then also the college I went to previously, like I said, I led their worship team at church. I did track. I was a part of an another club. So I think that's why. I think that's why. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's 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 really impressive. Um, you know, do you have you know a favorite athlete? Favorite athlete? Mm, no, I don't. Okay. I I mean, I I don't really watch a lot of track because I grew up watching gymnastics. Like yeah. that was my main thing. But I think gymnast if you want. I think my favorite gymnast would probably be. Um, that's, or, or it doesn't have to be, I mean, some people like Kobe Bryant, some people, you know, for example, like even if they didn't play basketball, that, that was their favorite. Oh, I, mean, it could uh, be I like Michael Jordan. I watched the whole documentary. It's on Netflix. Yeah. Have you seen it? The Last so Dance? Cool. Yes. It's so good. I could watch that over and over again. It uh, really gave you an insight to Michael Jordan, his way of thinking and, you know, his, his, yeah. uh, you know, where, he probably caught a lot of grief from people for the fact that, you know, he was so like focused on winning and doing whatever it took to win sort of thing. So. Yeah. I love like how the woman said in there that, you know, his reputation was ruined by his gambling problem problem, but and no one would know his name, but everyone knows who Michael Jordan is. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, that's an understatement because everyone knows who he is. So you're wrong. But yeah. <laughs> I know that um, you said that you just had your first semester um, at Dillard, um, so this might be not a fair question because you know everything was online. Um, but what's been your favorite class so far that you've had here? Oh man, um, I really like my chemistry and my English class. I like those two classes because I like chemistry and. Um, but I really liked my English class. It was so much fun because not only did, was the teacher great, but the students, you know, we had, it was, it was just, I would probably say English kind of surpasses chemistry, but I really love chemistry just because of the subject. But I really liked English because um, we did like group discussions, we did speeches, we actually interacted with each other, you know, it wasn't just, you know, sitting at class, yeah. getting your little notes, and then leaving. You know, yeah. like teacher interacted with us. We had projects with different um, students. It wasn't just like, oh, pick your group. Like she did it for us, and I really got to know other people instead of like the friend group that I was always in. You know, and I got out of the bubble that I was in. So I would definitely say that one, definitely. Great answer. Um, I have another. This might be a difficult question for you, but I think that we're going to get a very interesting answer from you. Um, okay. You know, we're, you're putting together your ideal, like, dinner table for conversation or whatever. Who would be at your dinner table? What historical figures? It could be family members. You know, what, what group would you be looking to have at your dinner table? Oh, man. I don't know. This is hard. <laughs> we can come back to this one. I can let you think on that for a little while. How many people am I allowed to pick to sit at this, my dinner this table? This is your table. This is your show. So you can pick as many as you want. <laughs> it, can they be 
are they do they have to be like alive today no or they can go as far back as forever it, this is this is your table anyone that you want to talk to anyone that you think you have a good conversation with can we come back to it well, I definitely think we can come back to the hardest okay. question for because okay. I, I think we're going to get a very good answer out of you so <laughs> okay i'm gonna think about this <laughs> okay no problem and you've talked a lot about the different talents that you've had. You, you play the instrument, you sing. Uh, is there any hidden talents that you have that people don't know about you? Um, I, feel like, I feel like my hidden talent would, I told you I played violin. I feel like I really don't tell a lot of people that. Yeah. I, I, like a lot of my friends, like my close friends, they don't even know mm -hmm. that I play violin. I mean, one of my really close friends that I've been friends with since I was in like fifth grade, she came over to my house and she was like, why do you have a violin in your room? I'm looking at her like, I play violin. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like a lot of people say I'm really funny. I get that a lot. Like I'm funny. So I, maybe that might be. That's, that's a great answer. So, um, let's see. Um, um, do you have any, like, before you compete, do you have any, like, pre-meet rituals you always have to go through or, you know, certain ways you have to do things or anything else like that? Okay, well, <laughs> this is going to be, you're probably going to laugh at this one, but the first thing I do is I have to listen to my Mary Mary and my gospel music. Like, it can't be, it has to be spiritual music i will not listen to anything that has cursing in it anything that's demonic anything that's talking about sex anything i won't do it it has to be just uplifting and like a spiritual you know thing and then i'll pray i pray before each race each jump i do um and then i also <laughs> I have when I run, I have to have holes in my socks. Okay. Holes in your yeah, socks. It's weird. But I've never ran with like nice socks. I like literally the only socks I take, they have holes in them. Okay. I I have socks that don't have holes in them, but I wear those when I'm not running. Okay. I don't know, it's weird, but hey, yeah. <laughs> you have your routine, it works for you. That's the important part. So yeah, I mean, whenever I won my state medals and everything, I had holes in my socks. Whenever I went to a Junior Olympics and I won there, I had holes in my socks. And I'm going to keep having yeah. holes in my socks. That, so. that makes sense. Um, say, you know, this next question. Say you get inducted to the Hall of Fame, whether it's the Dillard Hall of Fame, your work Hall of Fame, your high school Hall of Fame. Who are some people you would thank in your Hall of Fame speech? Um, I think I would think well I'm in my high school well I I'm we have like two different like hall of fames we have like a hall of fame for people who go all state and then we have a hall of fame for people who like actually like make a big time become millionaires so I'm in one of them like all really? yeah I'm on the wall uh, at my high school already but uh I think I would think my mom should be the first person I would think and then my second person I would think would probably be um my coach her name is miss hassel she was my high school coach she was a lot and we we had a good relation we had it we had a good and bad relationship it was like kind of like iffy but it was good but she really pushed me and i would say that she really um you know gave me like the strength for like becoming like a good triple jumper knowing what I need to do individually you know so I would thank her and then I would thank like my family like my sister and my brother so, yeah. hey, that, that, that is great that's wonderful yeah okay um my next question is um it seems like you're very active um what was your first ever job oh my gosh my first ever job was um so they we have like cleaners at our church and I remember one time I was just sitting down and I was like 16 years old because I or no, I started working when I was 17 years old and I worked at the church for three years before I stopped so I worked there for a long time but it was just cleaning it was just like oh no actually that was not my first job my first job was modeling scratch that I missed okay. out Wow. I modeled, 
I started modeling when I moved to Louisiana. And then after I moved back, we we were a part of a agency called Images Agency in Front Neck, St. Louis. And I got like Nike gigs and stuff and it paid pretty, it nice. paid okay. Wow. So that was my you first job. so much great information about you. It's that was my first job. I I forgot about that. That was such a long time ago. Wow, you made me think back. <laughs> well, glad I can do that. And we are learning some great information about you. So I am very impressed. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh, um, for your hometown, like when you talk about your hometown, like um, what are things you brag about about your hometown? Oh, St. Peter's. Well, it is the seventh place to live in the United States. I make sure I tell everybody that we actually got voted in like the best news magazine for the seventh top place to live in the nation. Okay. So I, every time someone asks me, oh, where do you live? Where are you from? I'm St. Peter's, St. Pete. So I like to brag about that. And then also our, we don't have like any like violence, like nothing ever happens out here ever you could leave your door open and you'd be fine for a week i'm telling you that's that's awesome that's awesome i mean growing right. up a place safe uh, where you know it's a place where people want to live that's, that's tremendous so um yeah what's a place that you've always wanted to see that you have yet to see yet but in the future you plan on seeing spain and uh barcelona well i think barcelona's near yeah, spain is Spain, so obviously, but I want to see that. Yeah, but in particular, you want to see Spain, but in particular, you want to see Barcelona. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely that place. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think you mentioned that uh, you know you're funny. You know, you, that you know people might not know that about you. But um, what's maybe something that uh, people might misunderstand about you? That people that you know when they that don't know you very well, they might misunderstand about. You. I don't know. I think I'm like, I think I'm pretty uh, sensitive and passionate and I get down on myself, but me getting down on myself isn't me like, you know, not loving myself, nothing like that because, because I really like, I've really grown, grown as a person and I feel like I, I could be by myself and I love being in my bed by myself doing every like I don't even care because I feel like people take for granted the time that they have spending time with yourself so yeah. I feel like a lot of people misinterpret me wanting to be by myself by being being like sad and all this stuff but really like I love spending time with yeah. my my own self getting you to know myself because I feel like that's the most important thing because if you don't know who you are and you're not alone then how are you ever going to know who you are with the person or yeah. with your friends or whoever it is you know yeah, exactly. so. you, you need time to self-reflect and kind of figure out who you are and you know i pull in yeah. it's it's wonderful um let's see who you know what person in your life inspires you the most uh, probably my mom yeah i would say her okay yeah definitely her because <laughs> she's just well, she's a single parent most of my life, and she's um, accomplished so many things. Like, she's a teacher. She's, she has two, ma two master degrees, working on her doctorate, and she did that all on her own. So. Awesome. You know, your, your mom definitely is inspirational. I, I haven't met her, but I'm already inspired by her, you know. So, and <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Like, you've got an incredible, fun personality, and I'm sure that's a reflection of your mother as well. Um, so. Yeah, she's, she's a comedian also. She's really funny. And she's very loud, too. Hey, that, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah. What in, uh, we're, we'll kind of wind down. We only have a couple questions left, and I appreciate you spending the time talking with me. Um, what's one thing you could not live without? Oh, wow. I cannot live without crab legs. I mean, <laughs> wow. What a great food, you know? I just couldn't do it. I, every time I eat crab legs, like a pound or two, I just like have this overwhelming, like feeling like, wow, that just made my day. 
so I can't live without them. I, I mean, I don't even know what I would do. I mean, granted, I would survive, and it yeah. would be sad, you know, but I really like them. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. well, back to my question about um, who would be at your uh, dinner table. You know, you can put together your dinner table. Um, and, you know, like, who would you like to have at your, you know, dinner table? It could be alive. It could be people that have passed on, people that you just think you'd have good conversations with, people that might, you know, have good conversations together. Okay. Um, I would have, um, Mom, can you grab my charger? What is that? It's upstairs in my room. Please, Your granddaddy, your family. Okay, so the first person I would have is um, my grandpa, uh, because he's just like, he was, um, he's like, just a great, just like a great person. I remember when I was younger, he would just, he would just teach me like everything that he possibly could. He was just overall like a great man, like a manly figure in my life, you know, um, and since you know, not saying that my dad is like a bad dad or anything, no. but he just really wasn't, you know, in my life, like how I wanted him to be. Yeah. But my grandpa, he just like an awesome person, an awesome person to be around, awesome person to talk to. Um, I, he would always just go above and beyond to make me happy. So definitely it would be him. Like he was a, he was a general in the Vietnam war. He, he was, he's done like a lot. He's a great person. So definitely he would be at my table. I'm going to charge my, get my phone on the charger so it won't die. Okay. Is <laughs> that would be good? Okay. Yeah, so my grandpa and then the second person would definitely be my mom because I can't can't have a dinner without her. I mean yeah. I wouldn't leave her in the dust like that. Um even though like we kinda go we kinda go back and forth because we kinda have like the same personality. Yeah. Not like we don't have like the same, like sometimes I'm a little bit more down to earth, but we, we kind of like clash a little bit. So yeah, I'd have her. And then she's in the background. So it's just, oh, she's she's just providing the laugh track uh, behind you. So. <laughs> um, and then who else I would have? I would have my niece at my dinner table because she's just hilarious. Like she's really, really funny. Her name's uh, Elaine. She just makes these jokes and she had, does like these little noises. She's like eight years old. I'd have her. And then I'd have her sister because I can't leave her out. <laughs> like what? She's a miracle baby. I'd have my mom. I mean, I'd have my sister and then I'd have like a famous person. I think that I might want Beyonce. Because, okay. you know, everyone talks about Beyonce and she has she has like this whole facade but I'm wanting to know like the just like the fun thing that she likes to do yeah. like does she get a break what kind of um face wash does she use like what does she like to do besides singing like yeah. is she mean like you know like actually talk to her and sit down with her and like get to know her because I feel like she's like the she's like the most famous celebrity there there is like everyone knows Beyonce yeah but they might mm -hmm. it's behind the curtain sort of thing and you want to you know you know like get an actual real conversation going on there so I totally understand that so yeah and then I feel like another person would mind me maybe be Harriet Tubman and because I want to know like because she's like awesome obviously mm -hmm. i don't understand who wouldn't want to eat dinner with her i mean <laughs> what she sacrificed so much for like oh, african americans she, i mean yeah i would definitely have harriet tubman and okay i'm gonna choose one more person and then i would probably have um 
Hmm. <laughs> trying to think of a like a I forgot her name. Dang it, I forgot her name. What? Tasha Cobbs. Tasha Cobbs. Okay. I don't know if you know who that is, but she's a famous gospel singer and she's okay. like one of my favorites. So that is a great collection of people. Um, yeah. I have one more question for you. I um, mean, you mentioned normally my last question of the day is, you know, what's your major? And I know that your major is uh, biology with pre-medicine uh, pre and concentration. And you mentioned that you were uh, planning on being a pediatrician. Have you always wanted to be a doctor or was that something that kind of came to you, um, later, you know, later in life? I don't know. I feel like the first, very first job that I ever wanted, like, was to be like a firefighter because I remember like my very first costume on career day when I was a little kid I had a firefighter suit on me so that was the very first so I I've not always wanted to be a doctor so yeah <laughs> so that's the answer to that <laughs> it oh. switched up a lot but, but you, you, you're still I mean like you know even after you graduate you still can go a lot of different directions and that's why well, my question was going to be that, you know, like I knew it said pre medicine, I didn't know what area you were going to specialize in. Um, and, you know, because like there's obviously a lot of areas you can go, and even after you graduate, you know, just because you say it now doesn't mean that in two years you might not say, you know what, I want to concentrate on a different area of medicine or whatever. So, um, but I do appreciate you taking the time to talk with me, um, Samaria. Um, this has been by far one of my favorite. Uh, interviews we've done. Um, oh, I thanks. The time. You are educational. You've got a great personality. It comes through very well. Um, so I thank you for taking the time, especially as busy as you are. Um, and um, I look forward to uh, getting the chance to, uh, you know, talk to you once you get back on campus, because um, uh, you're definitely a person that would be at my dinner table. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> thank you. Let me see. Very happy. Wow. <laughs>